Um, I'm going through and unfortunately have to re-upload a lot of my um, a lot of my videos because apparently I didn't realize that I was saving them as 480 instead of 1080 and the video quality was junk. So I do apologize for that up front. So I'm going to be redoing some of my videos, probably not all of them, but some of them. Um, but without further ado, here's a redone of the $400 or less gaming computer. So what is the point of this computer? Well, basically, your son comes up to you one day and has the brand new AAA title and says, Hey, Dad, I can't play this. And you say, why can't I play it? And he loads up on his laptop with Intel HD graphics. No offense to Intel HD graphics, but it's not really suitable for gaming. And it doesn't start. So you're kind of at a an issue here because you don't know what to do. You don't have enough money to fork out to buy an Alienware or a Dell XPS or one of those high-end custom builds. Um, you put together a computer in the past, but you really, you really don't know what to buy. And you run out of time to search. Well, spend 10 minutes, look at my video, and you'll be ready to do that. So here's a list of parts. Uh, it comes to $420 before rebates, $344 after rebates. Now you can sub in a couple things here. Um, well, actually, it's after promos and rebates. There's only 15 rebates, so uh, is three is three ninety four before rebates. Um, you could swap out for a slight cheaper power supply without a rebate. Uh, you can get RAM without a rebate, so that's not a real big issue. But anyway, without further ado, here is the actual build itself. Intel Pentium G2020, which is an Ivy Bridge core processor, which is built off the LGA 1155 architecture, which started with the Sandy Bridge architecture. The CPU is a lot of power for the for what you would think. You know, if you're used to the old Pentium Ds or the um, excuse me, early core two duos, um, you would think, well, it's only a dual core. Well, this is a lot different from a from your standard dual core. It has a third a third level of cache, has a very high amount of instructions per cycle, it has a very low amount of pipelines which plug the Pentium Force, uh, which also now plugs the uh, early FX series as well. Uh, has a lot of power, can run a lot of your games in the highest settings like World of Warcraft, Mr. Pandaria. It can max it out League of Legends, Starcraft 2, Diablo 3. It has a lot of horsepower to do that. Your newest games, like your Crisis 3, um, those will utilize for course even the um, FX4100, which is a uh, which really lacks in power due to a flawed design on the bulldozer architecture, will probably outrun this CPU with a higher end GPU when you try to do higher graphics setting, higher anti-listing stuff like that. Uh, but it'll it'll play all those games in decent settings at 1080p, even the most demanding games. Uh, next, I want an MSI B75 motherboard. Um, a lot of the old H61 motherboards will support Ivy Bridge processors natively, but you may have to um, update the BIOS, so that's why I went with an Ivy Bridge board. Uh, not much really to say about it. Intel makes good boards across uh, across um, the board, rather, and um, you really don't have to worry about it. I mean, it will lack in features compared to a higher-end board, but it doesn't lack in quality. That's the big thing. Yes, you only have two DIMM slots. Yes, you probably only had, I think, only has four SATA slots. Only one PCI Express, but it's 3.0. You know, you don't have a ton of features, but you have the quality you need. You don't have to worry about failing down the road. Uh, obviously, there's always a chance for fail for any kind of hardware, but it's not like you're getting a cheap ECS board or an AMD 960 board. Um, so, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I went with the single 4 gig stick. I usually don't do this. I did it because... I have a feeling you guys are going to want to upgrade to 8 gig down the road, and I didn't want to have to make you guys get a whole new kit. It's better to go 2x 2 gig if you don't plan to upgrade. However, if you want to upgrade, go with the 4 gig stick now. Uh, you don't have to pair it with the same RAM, although it is preferred, but I believe this runs at 1333 megahertz, so we'll downclock. Make sure if you upgrade the RAM, don't get below 1333 megahertz, so you don't have to worry about a performance decrease. Um, 500k hard drive you can go bigger, smaller, however you want, but I went with that because I think that somebody that might use this as a family-oriented computer with some horsepower behind it might want a decent-sized hard drive. One terabyte, you're looking at another 10, 15 bucks if you want to go that route. Um, however, shaving money off, you don't shave much going to 320 or 250. Um, next is a video card. I like this video card, so we're actually going to pull it up on Newegg here, um, and I'm going to go over a couple things about it because I like it a lot. Um, first of all, it is $109.90 uh, with a 14% off, brings it down to about $94. Bucks. That in itself is a good deal. I, when I look at deals, I want to see, hey, look, is it a good deal and it has a rebate on top of it? And this definitely meets the criteria. <coughs> so, um, but outside of that, I like it for a couple other reasons. Let's look at the actual card itself. Um, 
giant fan on top of the card. Uh, it is an intake fan. Um, I like that a lot because it has very good cooling. It's not a very long card. It is about uh, 5.71 inches across. Um, and it does take a PCI Express 6 pin connector, but it doesn't draw a lot of power. It runs very cool. As you can see, you can see the aluminum heat fins right here under it, and it does dissipate heat back into the case, so we did choose a good case for that. Um, but yeah, that's it has an open air design, so it's going to run very fast, very efficient, very cool. You do get $75 in in game coupons of World Tanks Hawking and Plant Side 2 as well. Um, just a quick look at the specs, 5,000 megahertz effective memory, that's 1,250 megahertz times 4 for GDDR5, 1,071 megahertz core clock, um, and it does have HDMI D sub DVI, uh, your standard small, small form factor like I said, and it is ready for uh, 3D vision, uh, NVIDIA surround, however if you're trying to game, I would not run 3D surround on this card, no offense, it is a good card, but you're looking at a much higher quality, higher performance rig all together so and one last thing I want to say about this card is it does have one gig of VRAM and yes there are cards with two gig of GDDR3 VRAM let me explain this to you you take let's say an HD 7750 which is inherently a good card but they do make in GDDR3 the purpose of two gig of video memories for higher end cards starting about $160 $170 and up that have the horsepower behind it to be able to use the extra VRAM for high resolution, higher texture resolution, higher anti-aliasing, and to some degree high anisotrophic filtering. If you don't have the horsepower behind it, it's pointless to spend extra money on VRAM, especially if you're using GDDR3 memory. It has half the power and the speed of GDDR5, so it's absolutely pointless. It's a sales gimmick. Don't fall for it. So, moving forward, we have the Rosewell Blackbone case. Now, Rosewell gets a lot of flack, and I really think it's not warranted, because, yes, they are a budget computer um, company. You know, They do make decent quality stuff in their higher-end products. Your power supplies are decent. Um, maybe not as much as a Silverstone or an AX1200 decent, but it's still something that I would use. I've used them in the past, and I'll use them again. Um, their cases, especially um, this case in particular, you're not going to find another case for $32 that has an intake fan, as seen right here, and an exhaust fan, as seen right here. They're both 120 millimeter. You're not going to find that for $32 elsewhere that's why I went with it it's not very heavy it's a relatively light case uh, it has plenty of expansion cable management is limited you are dealing with that and it is top amount of power supply so there definitely are some cons with it but again we're going for good airflow decent quality effectiveness and not very expensive and this meets all those criteria if you're going to be picky about the case you're going to have to spend fifty sixty dollars and then you're going outside of what a budget PC would be uh, and that's fine. I'm going to do other videos for higher end products, five, six, seven, all the way up to a thousand dollars probably, how to budget your PC properly. So, going back to the actual build in itself, we have a Corsair CX430 watt. I know a lot of people are going to complain about this. The Builder series is not the best series of power supplies. Yes, it's 80 plus bronze. Yes, it's better than a Colmax or Raymax. Yes, it's better than standard. But when it comes to 80 plus bronze, it's on the lower level tier of quality. It's still 80 plus bronze. It's still a very good value. There's an Antec Basic 430 watt that's 80 plus, 90 plus bronze for a little bit cheaper. It's 42 bucks with no rebate. So out the door, it's cheaper in the long run. It's more expensive. Should you get that? That's that's your call. Um, personally, if it was me, I'd go with the Builder Series. You're not generating a lot of power. You have a you have a 64 watt TDP video card. You have the 55 watt TDP processor. This says 203. It's more probably like 160, 170 maybe. 430 watts. You're going to be fine. If it's going to fail, it's going to fail because of something else, not because it doesn't have enough power. There's always that chance of failure in all hardware components. Although in this day and age, it seems to be either DOA or working there's really not a lot in between um, not much to say about the DVD drive it burns DVDs um, not really needed but I figured you guys might want it so I threw it in there so guys uh, thank you guys for watching this video on how to build a budget gaming computer and all-purpose computer for $400 or less 
Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, leave a comment in the section below. Uh, maybe hit me up on Elias Tech Tip forums on budget PC solutions in a general form. Uh, very good community. I highly recommend going over there. Uh, very knowledgeable people, very friendly. Um, the worst case scenario is if you ask what you would deem a dumb question, which there really aren't any, as Linus says, they may post a link to one of their um, threads that they have a collection of data called a sticky in. They just say, hey, take a look at this and see if you find your answer. And if you don't, quote something that may have answered your question, but you don't get it and say, hey, look, guys, I don't understand this. And you're going to have 10 people break it down and explain it to you step by step on what you want to know and why. Very good people. Highly recommend going over. They don't endorse me by any means, but I really, really want to promote the community because they're good people. So, as always, guys, uh, keep an eye out for the giveaway coming up soon. Um, I'm, I already re-uploaded a video for that. Um, just some ideas I want to put together and hopefully I can get this thing going. So, anyway, guys, thank you guys for your time. Subscribe, like the video, and have a great day as you.